you know, you know, listen to what sister said? I pleaded. I pleaded or I, what's another word for pleading? Beg, huh? beseech, beg, beseech. Beseech, beg is almost, almost borderline the other way. Uh, beg, right? I pray, I pray. So you have to remember, and, and I think I said it last week, all of the Devarim in Deuteronomy is, is Moshe's drash, Moshe's breakdown of the, the four books he had just written on Hashem's behalf, right? The four, the four books that Hashem had transmitted through him for him to write word for word. And now we have Moshe doing his breakdown of all that has transpired while getting ready to hand the reins over to Joshua, the next leader of Israel, right? So we have this happening. And so we have Moshe pleading, praying, begging to a degree that he should be able to at least see the, the destination of these people that he had been ministering, been shepherding, been leading for the past 80 years, right? Let, let me just see where the destination is going to lead. Okay. And Hashem in His in His mercy allows Moshe not to enter, but to see the destination. And in that He also gives Moshe a prophecy over the children of Israel, right? He tells them that you're going to go to But within this Torah portion, let me, let me start out with a story. I like starting out with stories better. <clears throat> there was a rabbi who had purchased a donkey and subsequently found a large, pre large precious jewels in the saddlebags. When he had went through it, he went right away and returned the jewels to the previous owner. And the story is kind of the epitome of this week's Torah portion. When we're perplexed with the choice between right and wrong, even though it may cost us the jewels, right? They weren't yours to begin with. They weren't yours. Mm -hmm. So you have no business holding on to them. Just return it to where it belongs in your life and then prosper with that donkey that you have, right? Yes. Let me get further on. So it, it isn't a question throughout the Torah portion throughout Devarim of integrity and honesty. And it leads into this, this whole thing of do we, do we, brother, can you, brother, can, can you take, put this over there, please? Thank you. It, it leads into this whole question of Kosher mitzvahot, right? Do you keep the mitzvahot of God with a whole heart, gleefully, or do you do it because, oh my gosh, I signed the marriage contract and now I'm married to him? Right? Do you do it like that, right? Like you're now chained and shackled to your spouse? Or do you do it for joy? Because these mitzvot, these instructions, give us the plan to a better life, for growth, for prosperity, for increase, not only mature in, in our maturity, but spiritually. These instructions are designed for us to have a better life. They're not designed for, you to, for them to be things that you go through and you regret every moment of doing them. 
It's kind of like keeping kosher, right? No matter what degree you keep kosher at, whether it's uh, all the way on, on the right side of things, like uh, very strict orthodox observant, uh, observance of, of kosher, or you do it all the way on this side, the, the, uh, the progressive form of kosher, right? Which still includes a little bit of trait in each of your di diets. Okay, a little bit of non-kosher is what that means. Okay, um, so whichever side you, you observe, if you observe it at all, do you do it begrudgingly, right? Like, like you're there at a restaurant and you have the salad because they don't serve anything else that's kosher. And you look, you look over at the person who's eating perhaps pork and you're like, but I'm stuck eating this. Is this your attitude towards the instructions of God, the things of God? Understand that he gave you this diet so that way you would have a healthy life. He gave you this diet, this plan, so that way you would increase in goodness. And that through you, goodness would in fact increase. He didn't do this as a means of punishing you. Well, now you're mine, and I'll do as I please. I'm going to put you through these obstacle courses. No, it's not that way. He did it as a way to separate you from your carnality and cause you to grow on, on levels of maturity and spirituality. That way, if you grew, then your blessings would increase. But you cannot expect to have an abundance of blessing in your life and not grow. You cannot contain it. Each person here is a vessel. And in a vessel, you can only hold so much value. Do you all agree with that? Yeah. Yep. Let's see. Uh, Leonard, he, he's, he's one of the thinnest fellows here. <laughs> could, could, could you eat four pounds of mashed potatoes Probably and contain not. it? Probably not. No, right? Yeah. You would have to stretch your system out a little bit before you could, right? Yeah, right. Uh, Heather says George can eat four pounds of mashed potatoes. <laughs> Actually, I want to see that, but... Uh, <laughs> But no, the, the principle is, is that you had to, these, these, this process causes for you and I to be increased, okay? So why do you keep Sabbath? Why do you keep kosher? And let's just go around the room briefly, okay? Why do you keep Sabbath? Yes, you there, you, you, biting your lips. Because you love God. That's good. Okay, we're good. We're gonna go with that. Okay, why do you keep why do you keep Sabbath? You and the yellow. <laughs> because he says. Okay. Okay. Because he says. Brother, how about you? Why do you keep Sabbath? Yeah, there's no one behind you. <laughs> You're on an island. You're there by yourself. How do you keep cups? Why do you keep the Sabbath? Well, I keep the Sabbath because I love the Lord and uh, He chose me. He chose me and His gratitude for choosing me. I choose to follow what He said was the right way to do it. Amen. Well put. Well put. All right. So, it says because He chose him, He chooses to, out of gratitude, to follow the things that God says. Okay? Very well put. So there, there are, but you're going to find within your walk with God, you are going to find people who observe the things of God grudgingly. Right? With Almost with a grudge. Right? Or you chose me, now I have to do this. 
No, you actually don't have to do it. If you cannot do it with, with hesed, with love and with kindness, then you shouldn't do it at all. If you cannot do it because you appreciate that he, out of, like Arnold said, out of everyone in the world, he chose you. If you cannot appreciate that and observe with joy, then don't do it, right? Don't do it. So, it is written that there is, there is keeping Sabbath and keeping the mitzvahs or keeping kosher it, it, it's it's either we simply are doing it because he said or because it is a system that he has created best for our development right you know when, when you were kids and I think everybody in this room was a kid at one point and uh, the young lady here's Two young ladies are still kind of there. Right? At some point in their lives, in your lives, your parents put you through things that you really didn't appreciate. Maybe like for me, it was swimming practice, right? I, I didn't really, I really like getting tossed in the pool every single week. I didn't like, you know, really, okay. I, there were certain things that I went through that I didn't really care for. But they, they're a process to develop who you are, right? It's a process to develop who you are. And most certainly like Hashem's diet or Hashem's weight, His Sabbath, His appointed times, these are all means to develop who you are as a person. To bring about the increase of goodness in and through your life. Does that make sense? Because if we didn't have these, then what would we be? We would be a chaotic assembly, right? An assembly just doing what we want, when we want, how we want. Say, well, this week we're going to just hang bats everywhere and we're going to worship with some bats. Or does it say that in the Bible? Right? Thank you. It doesn't say that anywhere in the instruction, so we don't do that, Right? We don't do things that aren't in the instruction, right? Right. So he did these things as a means to develop who you are and where you're going in your life. That way he can help you to reach what he has designed you for. Okay? You need to remember, Israel was given the instructions, and 40 years later, they arrived at the destined spot. There had to be a time of learning. A time of learning and applying the things of God. There is going to be a time of learning and applying. If he has called you to certain offices within his kingdom, whether it's wood chopper, water pour, or pastor, whatever it is. If he has called you for an, to an office, to a destination. If he has purposed you, and in fact all of you are purposed. If he has done this, then understand from the time that you enter into covenant with him to the time you start doing what he has designed you for, there is going to be a process of you learning what he has called you for. Amen. And you have to keep your minds open and attentive to him and his word and not on every single political thing that goes on in the world. Amen. Yeshua said, he never said pay attention to Rome. He never said pay attention to Rome. And I say this for a lot of people who will watch that will, you know what, they're busy paying attention to what's happening politically. That is not where our attention needs to be. Our attention needs to be on the kingdom and what we are called to do. If we're not doing what we are called to do, then we are failing the king. And I don't care what you know or where you know it from. If you're not doing what he has called you to, what is written in scripture, then you are failing the king. There's something about Devarim. There's something about it. 
There's something about this Torah portion. We see the Shema within this Torah portion where they ask the Messiah, when they ask King Melech, which is the greatest command of all? What does he say? He quotes from this Torah portion. He quotes it. He says, Shema Israel, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai. Therefore, you say quiet. You're not supposed to say quiet. Baruch Shem Kavum Ahuto Leolam Bai. Twice. One more and you're out. All right. Thankfully for us, he is not a baseball umpire. Uh, sister, can you go let Sister know where the, I think she's trying to find the restrooms? Zili, or somebody, please. She's going up the stairs, and that's a long trip up and down uh, to the wrong direction. Okay? All right. So, he gave us this command. Yeshua quotes this command ten times throughout his, mi his mission, throughout his <coughs> ministry, while he was walking with the disciples. Ten times Messiah quotes from this Torah portion. There's something here. Later, after the Messiah ascends, and, and a couple, of, about a hundred years after, the disciples that are there, they put together a summary of the book of the book of Deuteronomy of Devarim, they put together a summary that this is what all new disciples should take to heart and learn. So there's something about this book specifically that is for us to drosh, for us to study, and to break apart into more more so than just study, more so than just talk about because there's so many people that just talk about things. They talk and talk and talk and talk and they don't apply anything. They're sitting there talking all day long about the scripture, eating a pork sandwich. I mean, come on, let it go. <laughs> apply the word of God to you and you will begin to see increase in your life. And yet, unfortunately for a lot of people here and out there, he's going to make you let go of some things that don't belong. There are going to be a lot of squares that he's going to make leave your life. Because they simply don't fit. They don't fit his plan for you. They don't fit your life. And you keep running back to it because you think it's some source of knowledge or security. Or maybe you feel like you're on some sort of platform, but you're not. It's all vanity. We are called to serve the king. We are sorry, called to serve the kingdom. We are not called to serve Rome. We are not called to serve Republican or Democrat or whatever else you want to ally with. You're called to serve the kingdom. Yesterday, there was these two people that were debating. I'm, I'm, he, he's liberal. He's conservative. He's, I don't even know what he said he is. And they look at me as kingdom-minded. Sorry. I, I, don't, I don't care. You know, I, I care about the kingdom. And if it applies to the kingdom, then I'm invested. Right? If it doesn't apply, then I'm not invested. Uh, okay. I only have so many so much time here. And I don't want to waste my time with, with, with things that don't further the kingdom. I'm sorry if that seems a little whatever, but I only have so much time here. He has trusted me in this time that he has allowed me to get a job done, to tend the field, to spread the gospel, to spread the good news, to spread the truth. To share it. And not to get caught up in, in, in vices that won't lead me to the kingdom. If I get caught up following some different movement that leads me away from the kingdom, then that's just what it did. It created separation between me and the kingdom. It created a gap. It created an issue. It created 
something. And then I'm hardened towards kingdom things because I'm believing full, wholeheartedly that this agenda is correct. God's agenda is correct. God's agenda is correct. And I'm sorry if this offends. Actually, I'm not sorry, but um, if you're ally and you're wholeheartedly dependent on one particular political party, Grab a hold of God. Grab a hold of the truth. And no matter what party you subscribe to, look into the good and bad of that party. Don't be narrow-minded. Yeshua says for us to be as wise as... Listening. Come on, that way y'all don't want to say that part? The serpent. Who are we supposed to be as wise as? The serpent. Come on, two people know that? Come on. We're supposed to be as wise as the serpent. As a serpent, right? As cunning as, as the adversary. Know what's going on on both sides of that story. Don't just, oh, I'll subscribe. Come on. One of the reasons Hashem chose Israel is because they were a thinking people. Not because they were scholars, not because they were the biggest or the baddest people around, but because they could think, right? Because they could think. So think, think outside. And true, a lot of times they, they didn't think. Huh? Yeah, I'm saying 40 years they, they had, yeah, so. There's that. But think. Okay? Get, get outside of anything that isn't committing you to the kingdom. Stop looking for excuses not to be committed. Let me go further on. Does anybody here regret entering into covenant with Hashem? Nope. nope. Anybody? Hey, y'all won't have committed today anyway, right? I'm all good with it. I love eating kosher. <laughs> I'll be honest, you know, a couple a couple days ago, maybe a week ago, uh, it's gonna we started this new eating plan, right? Started this thing and it's a fun thing. But in it, right, I find myself my, I find my flesh like, oh my goodness. I could be snacking right now. <laughs> You, you, you can't, all right, we're doing this because it's a benefit, it's a blessing. So you can't. You have, you have to check yourself, right? You have to check yourself and understand that you're doing this because it's a blessing, right? And the same way with keeping kosher or following Hashem's ways, you're doing it because it's a blessing for your life. It, it is not a means of, of some sort of weird punishment for you, but it's a means to develop you and grow you. It's a means to develop and grow you. Do we look at the mitzvah, the instructions, as task of discomfort placed in our lives? No. no. Or is it a road map to take you it's to your destination? It's a road map. You can't disagree with everything that sounds good. The Shema teaches us that every part of loving God and following His Torah, our Yeshua, is intended for our growth and betterment. Every part of that. The first part of it. Pay attention. Right? Shema. Pay attention. Hear. Listen. So every time I hear listen, I think of that, this child that Ishka sent me a video of. He's trying to get his mother's attention. Listen, listen, listen. And yeah, that's the one. And uh, you need a little discipline. But aside from that, he's trying to get 
the attention, right? And Shema is, is for us to be attentive to what is going on, right? Be attentive, be aware. To hear and do. Thank you, sir. To hear and do. Well put, Elder. Hear and do what? It tells you on the very next sentence. To love. Why, love my brother? That's easy. I can love my brother. Love my wife? That's easy. I can love my wife. Love my kid? Yeah, that's easy. I can love my kid. But it goes beyond that, right? There's people you don't like? <laughs> oh my goodness. We're going to build a confessional for you. All right. <laughs> so, to love others, right? Love them whether they're Democrat. Love them whether they're Republican. Love them no matter what affiliation they choose to have because they're not there with you yet. And I say yet, because at some point, all people have an awakening. At some point, everyone has an awakening. Whether they get up and, and carry on with their blanket over their eyes, that's their business. But we love them as they are. Amen? Amen. Let me, let me go around the room really quick. Did God... Hey, what, turn to your neighbor and say, did God ask you for a qualification before he loved you? Ask your neighbor. What do you say? <laughs> you're supposed to ask a question. Oh, you, you don't have a neighbor. Somebody needs to sit over here with Norman. He ain't got nobody Letter. over here. Because we are saved, we choose to obey Him. Right? Because He has said yes to us, we say yes to Him. Right? Yes. Yeah. We, we, now we have this ketubah, we have this marriage contract between us. This book of Devarim, this book of the Bible. And we look through it and we see what it is that, that our partner is and is not okay with. And we choose to do the things that he is okay with instead of purposely doing the things that aren't cool, right? Let me go further on. So these mitzvot that we see, this Yeshua that we see, we see the reflection of Hashem and Yeshua, we see the reflection of the Father and His desire to make our lives shine for His good, for, for His kingdom, and for our betterment. Understand that all the mitzvahs, all the instructions, all the things are, are brought about so that way your life can grow. How many people are tired of walking around the mountain every single year? How many people are tired of doing the same thing over and over and over again? And, and, and you continue to do the same things the way the Romans do them, over and over again. You keep doing them in a Roman manner. 
at some point you have to stop and do them the way God has said to do them. You have to stop doing things the way Romans do it. Again, he never called. Where, where was Messiah birth? The house of bread, right? Bethlehem, right? The house of bread, right? Is that right? Everybody, yes. Is that right? Or did I get it wrong? Yeah. Roman, uh, Norman, you're the guy. Did I get that right? Yes or no? Bethlehem. Yeah. The house of what? Bread, right? Yeah. House of bread. House of bread. Then what, what, what? We could take a hold of, of the. Of who, what is what is Yeshua? He's the living what? Bread. Uh, he's the living bread. That's cute. Let's do that. That's cute. Torah. Somebody's hungry. They went back to bread immediately. <laughs> All right. So. He's the living. Word. Huh? He's the living water, but he's living. Word. 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 Torah. Alright, so, word. There you go. And so, we eat of the bread of life. We eat of the word of God. And so, when he's tempted there in the, in the wilderness, he said that we, we don't live by bread alone, but by out of every word that comes from Hashem's mouth. Right? Amen. We live by every word of Hashem. Not by every word of the world. Right? But we live by every word of God. Every word of Hashem. So much. So over 11 times, over 10 times, Yeshua quotes Devarim. In this, this is, uh, Rabbi Rashi puts it this way, that Deuteronomy is, is kind of like a, a constitution of the covenant. It tells you everything within it, right? It gives you the plan, the breakdown, all this. And, and for those of you who get discouraged and say, I cannot do this, later in Devarim, Moshe writes that, look, this isn't difficult. This is not a difficult thing that... God is asking you to do. He says it's nowhere across the ocean that you have to have somebody else get it. It's not up in the stars in the heavens that you have to have somebody get it. He says it's there with you. Wait, the word of God is here with me? Is that right? Wait, but the word of God is there in Arnold? Yes. Yeah. In there in Nancy? Yes. Really? In her too? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sometimes. Surely. Everybody. Wait, 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 wait. In Leonard? Oh, definitely Leonard. That's it. First question. Is he Lee? Yes. No. <laughs> so, wait. The Word of God is within each and every person here. Is that yes. right? Yes. Why isn't it revealed to us? Right, you can answer everything. Why isn't it revealed to us? Why isn't it, if it's there with you, why is, isn't it revealed to you? Huh? I was really wanting it. Listen, there was a truck at this car lot that I wanted for a whole year of salad. That didn't happen. I'm going to tell you. I, like, Father? Father? No. And I would get a no every single time when I stood next to that truck. No. No. You have to accept his no sometimes, okay? Understand that it's not for you. In the end, I realized I couldn't afford the gas on that thing anyway. You know what? It probably got like three miles to the gallon. It's insane. Yeah, so it's better that I didn't have it. Or I'd park it, nothing else would park in the driveway if I had that, right? Nothing else would fit. It's there. 
I got a truck, nobody else has nothing. <laughs> so it wouldn't work out. They should inhabit the praises of your people. He inhabits the praises. So that's one of the keys, right? For it to be revealed to us, we have to begin to praise him, right? Yes. And what is praising him? What is praising him? Is it just saying that? <laughs> is it just that? In your actions, in your words, yes, right. Attitude. Your attitude, right? You can't say, "Ah, I gotta serve God today." <laughs> John, I'm gonna pick on Zeli a little bit. Poor Zeli, I have to go up the stairs and down the stairs fifty times today. Elder, you were going to say something? Well, I was going to say that he is revealed through his word because his word is powerful, it's alive, it's active. And if we want it, we read it, we receive it, and he's revealed it. Right. So we have to apply and read the word, right? Read it and apply it. We have to praise in all that we do, right? So we, we read it, we apply it, we praise it. In all that we do, we continue in, the, in this in this method, right? And, and then we begin to love God in all that we are, in all that He is. And we get even, even the knuckleheads. We, we still love them too at that point, right? Even the people who purposely speak bad about you, we love them. Uh, we know that that is, you know what? We pray against that, but we love them, right? We love them. We don't love the choice that they make. In, in speaking negative, in, in being divisive. We don't love that at all. We don't condone that. We don't say, hey, let's all be divisive today. Let's just do it. Let's go cause havoc. We don't do that, right? We live out our worship, right? By, by knowing Him. And by knowing Him is learning the Scripture. It's learning the Scripture is to know Him. To know him is to learn the scripture. And then to worship him. Yeshua worshipped him. Yeshua worshipped him. You all say that? Yeshua worshipped him. You all say that? Yeshua worshipped him. It wasn't, it wasn't, you know, it, it, look, you, you have to understand that there is, there is a Yeshua worshipped the Father. Yeshua worshipped the Father. They said, when is it going to happen? Yeshua said, I don't know, only the Father knows. He said, but pay attention to Rome. And you'll know when it's going to happen. Yeah. Pay attention to the border. And you'll know when it's going to happen. Yeah. Pay attention to who's in the office. And you'll know when it's going to happen. Yeah. He said, pay attention to the moon and the stars. And you will know that it is the season. You will know that it is the season. Right? Pay attention to the kingdom. Are we being a part of some obscure little clique that, that isn't reaching out to anywhere? Or are we doing the work of God? Are we pursuing our own agendas, or are we pursuing the things of God? Are we in this for our own promotion, or for the promotion of the kingdom of God? If you do it for the for the promotion of God's kingdom, you in fact will be promoted. Amen. Right? Yeshua gave this wonderful little thing when he's washing the feet of the of the disciples. And he, he said, he who, and so the disciples are debating who's the greatest, right? You know, Peter had, had the arms, he was flexing a lot, he was a fisherman. And then, you know, Matthew, well, he, he had a real plain suit because he was, you know, the tax guy, right? So they, they were debating on who was, who was the guy. No, I'm kidding, they weren't flexing and showing off their suit. 
And they were debating who was the greatest among them. And Yeshua says, he who chooses to serve the least, right? Because if you want to be great, you have to be a servant. First and foremost, serve anybody. Anyone. Be kind to anyone. Not because they have something for you, or there's something you hope to gain through them, but because it is what God expects. Right? To love your neighbor as yourself. Amen. Right? Yes. To love Amen. others. John puts it this way, if there is no love in us, and we proclaim to be children of God, then we are liars. We are liars. And there is no God or no love in us. And love isn't just a, an, a, a word. It's a deed. It's an action. You have to choose to love. Why does it say, my see brother, right? I, I have to choose to be loving to him or to be a schlep to him, right? I have to choose. And all the time Hashem is watching to see which choice I make. Will, will I be gracious and kind to brother? Or will I be unkind? It's a choice that we make every day. We can't just blame everyone else around us. You know, I, they were driving. She was wearing a yellow shirt, so I didn't want to be nice to her that day. I didn't want to be nice. She was wearing a yellow shirt. I can't stand yellow shirts. You cannot use. So, so you know I'm funny, right? You cannot use it. There is no justification for bad behavior. You are not justified no matter what they did to you, when they did it to you. You are not justified to behave unkosher. Amen. He doesn't give you an excuse for that day. Here, I understand you missed school. You have an excuse. Best. Yeah, yeah. I get school. You get a pass to go to the lunchroom. You don't have to do that today. No, you have to do it every day. Not just today. Tomorrow, the day after, the day after, the day after. No matter how other people are choosing to be. You notice Yeshua didn't get into in knowing their minds. He behaved completely unkosher. Right, does it say that somewhere? Nope. Knowing their thoughts, knowing what they were plotting, Yeshua picked up spears and stuck them all right away. Nope. Got you. You never had a, I knew what you were going to do to me. He didn't do that, right? He maintained his composure. He kept kosher. Right? He held who he, he was secure in who he is in the kingdom. I ain't got to be who you are in the kingdom. I don't have to stoop to where you're at or jump to where you're at or whatever it is. I have to be who I am in the kingdom. Right? So don't worry about going back and forth with whoever. If they're not doing anything that furthers the kingdom, if you participate in it, you're not either. Right? Y'all are quiet today. It's okay. Y'all be all right. I'm going to finish this up. Moshe's here and he, he's, he's about to hand everything over. 
and Hashem instructs him. To go speak to Joshua. There's about to be this party. And you have to bless people who are going to go ahead of you. They're going to go on. And it's hard sometimes when people go on. Right? I, I, I know at one time in Ishka's in my career, it was hard when we had to go on for where we were. And yet, despite as difficult as it was for Moshe, because we hear in the beginning of this portion, he says, I pray thee, I pray thee, let me just, let me just see. Let me, let me go experience, let me just, let me, they have a little sample of the honey that you speak of. So we know it was a little difficult. But he was obedient to Hashem's word and to Hashem's will. And so Hashem tells him, instruct Joshua. Encourage him. Strengthen him. Build him up. Because he's about to go forth. And he shall cause them to inherit the land. He, Joshua has a big task ahead of him. Each and every one of you have big tasks ahead of you in your life, professionally and personally. We need to encourage one another. Strengthen one another. Bless one another. We don't need to do what citizens of Egypt or Rome do. We need to bless and encourage. Don't worry about what is going on politically. Worry about what's going on kingdomly. Worry about what's going on with the kingdom. Be kingdom minded. You are citizens of his kingdom. Be kingdom minded. Be kingdom minded. Bless you. We'll see you guys later.